So, um, hello everybody, I'm uh, Valerio Varricchio, and uh, thanks for the introduction. Um, so I worked with my supervisor, Professor Frazzoli, my colleague, uh, Brian Payden, uh, here, and uh, Dimitri Yeshov is an ex-postdoc in our lab. Um, and um, so we're going to talk about nearest neighbors. Uh, our scope of interest is nearest neighbors applied to motion planning. As we know, uh, it dominates the asymptotic complexity, so it's... Um, uh, some optimization in this field would be a pretty significant optimization to the sampling-based algorithms. Um, and for that reason, uh, it's important, uh, and it's, no, it's been known since the beginning, that it's important to use uh, efficient algorithms that works better than you know, linear search. Uh, the problem with these algorithms, uh, we're going to focus on KD trees, that's why I mentioned them in the slides, um, is that they're designed for Euclidean metrics, or in general, LP, um, LP norms. So, um, this work is focusing on, you know, trying to extend um, these uh, techniques to non-homonomic systems, uh, both uh, on a theoretical perspective, so we're going to have a theoretical analysis and, uh, uh, and propose improvements to the algorithms. So um, the problem is actually open because um, this is, these slides represent the most uh, frequent uh, way people implement um, sampling-based uh, planners for non-homonomic systems. They uh, basically do nearest neighbor search in the Euclidean space, and then um, we can see that that's, uh, that's leading to suboptimal connection. And clearly, the right choice for uh, nearest neighbors is uh, in the sense of a cost of connecting samples. Um, so we're going to go through uh, two flavors of the KD3 algorithms. Uh, the first one is the batch version. We're in the building phase. So in the batch version, we actually process the, the whole data set at once. Uh, we compute the maximum spread, roughly. This gives us a splitting direction, and uh, we split um, using the median element along that direction, and then we repeat recursively until we get to the leaves. These leaves we can call the buckets, so the spaces that I've highlighted there we call the bu buckets, and we know that for uh, these algorithms, um, they tend to be hypercubes uh, asymptotically. So their shape is basically, the, all the sides tend to be equal to each other. Um, what is interesting is that because we're using median, um, we are producing a balance tree, and uh, more interestingly, its, uh, its complexity has been proven to be logarithmic. Uh, I'm, I'm stressing on that because the next algorithm, the incremental one, uh, everybody, you know, it's, it's, it's known that KD3s are uh, logarithmic, but it turns out that uh, it, it hasn't been proven. It's just an empirical result. Um, so this, uh, what we do here is we process point by point, and uh, we split according to the, the normal, the hyperplane goes through the point, and we split according to the depth at which we're inserting the point. Um, so there's usually this splitting rule that actually cycles through the, um, the axis. Um, another thing that I want to, uh, okay, this tree is not guaranteed to be balanced, and as, as I said, the complexity uh, result is just observed but never proved. Um, something that I want to highlight with this slide is the uh, fact that during this, the query, um, we are actually intersecting balls with hyperplanes, and uh, when uh, these intersections are present, uh, basically we are forced to descend into subtrees that were not originally on the, uh, on the main search path. Um, whereas where this, this intersection is leaking, is it's not there, Basically, we can skip subtrees, and that's where the power of KD trees come from. Um, so, let's uh, based on that, what can go wrong when we use classic KD trees with non-homonomic system? Qualitatively speaking, the balls generated by non-homonomic system have privileged directions, uh, and these directions are also configuration dependent. So, um, so since the space partition are in a sense classically limited to be on cardinal axes, what's going on is that the balls tend to intersect the hyperplanes very often. And, uh, and therefore, the algorithm tends to visit more nodes that it possibly should. So our contribution is main, two main contribution. We try to see and quantify how bad this effect is in terms of complexity of the algorithm. And then uh, we propose improvements to the incremental uh, version. As I said, we're doing theory with the batch KD3 because for theory is more friendly. The incremental KD3 is uh, more useful in practice, so we're also working with that. Um, so this is a quick slide just to um, uh, quick, um, you know, there's a lot of machinery that I cannot go through, but basically we talked about balls, so we are associating um, uh, privileged directions. It's a concept that exists in uh, sub-remaining geometries. So we are associating non homonomic system with sub-remaining geometries, and what we're trying to do is we're trying to um, approximate the uh, reachable sets um, with uh, the boxes. And these boxes scale down um, as uh, their measure goes to zero, it, it, they scale down on different axes in different ways. And W are integers, exponents, to the uh, sides of the boxes that you can see in the picture. Um, and, um, and mu instead is just a constant that tells us exactly the size of the, of the box. Um, so an important result that we're relying upon is the ball box theorem. Uh, we, uh, the assumption is that, roughly speaking, that the system is uh, small time locally controllable. And when that happens, um, we know that we can have uh, two boxes an inner box and an outer box, uh, and, um, 
and the ball is contained uh, completely in the outer box and contained completely in the inner box. Uh, uh, the fact that the, uh, the weights on the two boxes are the same is the power of the, of the theorem, and basically it guarantees that we are building asymptotically tight bounds uh, to the reachable sets. Um, intuitively, if uh, we have a holonomic system or like Euclidean distance, all these weights are one because the balls shrink down uniformly in all directions. Uh, and there's a very easy procedure to follow based on Lie brackets that uh, enables us to determine these weights. So to get a practical grasp on it, we're considering the reach shaft vehicle. Um, it turns out that the privileged directions for this vehicle is the, are the body axis, front lateral, and heading axis. And uh, using this iteratively bracket procedure, we will get that the weights are one, two, and one, respectively for the front, lateral, and heading axis. And um, this gives us the intuition that, you know, why, uh, so lateral scales faster uh, than uh, front and heading because uh, intuitively the car has more troubles uh, achieving sideways uh, displacement. Um, so uh, the problem here is that uh, before I show these coefficients uh, are not so, while the Bose box theorem helps us find the weights very easily, the coefficients are kind of tricky. So we get around that with considering bounding maneuvers for, uh, for reach trap in particular. So it's easy to see that, it's easy to build these bounding maneuvers. Like for example, maximum front displacement is shown by uh, this maneuver, similarly maximum lateral displacement. And uh, we can uh, actually compute this in terms of t, take the first uh, term of the Taylor expansion and verify that we match the prediction uh, of the uh, ball box theorem. Uh, this is slightly more tricky for the inner bounding box. We just build this visualization that helps understand what's going on. So uh, from the top, we can actually see uh, where the box will be placed. And, uh, and then after that, we can actually understand what are the bounding maneuvers, which in this case are the, oops, should get fixed, okay. Uh, one is the uh, parallel parking maneuver that you're seeing here, and the other one is given by this uh, variation of a complete curve to the left uh, with a switch in between. Um, so uh, again, we match the ball box theorem. Uh, this guarantees us that these two boxes are in agreement with the ball box theorem. Um, why don't we use these results to uh, used to analyze the complexity of this algorithm. So we're looking at the batch KD3 again. Um, let's consider the balls uh, that we don't know, but we can assume that there's a ball that contains M nearest neighbors. Um, in this case, there are two nearest neighbors. If the algorithm is correct, eventually, uh, it will visit all the, um, all the buckets that intersect with this ball. Uh, so um, basically, um, for a balance tree, uh, is uh, the depth scales with the logarithm, logarithm of the nodes. So the complexity is basically the number of visited leaves multiplied by the logarithm of the nodes. Um, and um, so the classic result from Bentley in 75 is that since the number of leaves is proven to be constant asymptotically, then the complexity of the algorithm is logarithmic. But uh, what we found is that instead for non holonomic system, the complexity is exponential. Uh, it has like an, is an exponential term in it, where P can be written in terms of the um, non holonomic non parameters of the system that we introduced before. Uh, Sunday checks, for whole non-holonomic system, we get logarithmic complexity again, and, uh, and we can prove that the resulting complexity is always between logarithmic and linear, which kind of makes sense. Quick results validation, uh, the curve above, the, the top curve is actually a batch KD3 working with reach up metric, and um, the blue curve is a KD3 working with Euclidean metric, so we can, and this is the number of leaves, so we can see that the Euclidean metric goes to a constant, the, the reach up metric actually increases, but when we normalize by the, the factor of 1, 6, which is the one that works for reach up, then we actually get a constant behavior. So this matches with our theoretical predictions. Um, so this was actually a negative result. So we want to move to, say, something uh, positive, and uh, we propose a novel splitting strategy. Uh, this holds for the incremental version. Uh, we want to move from a classic approach that we saw before to something that looks like the one on the right, the Lee splitting strategy. Uh, the intuition is that we want the partitions to look as similar as possible to bounding boxes, so we want to match that asymptotically because that's the theory we have available. And um, so the two pillars of this strategy is that we want, for each sample, we want to get a hyperplane that passes through the sample and it's oriented according to a local axis, local previous axis, rather than a global um, a cardinal axis. And then we want to ensure that the buckets themselves cave asymptotically according to the uh, outer bounding box. Um, uh, we will see the results of this later, together with the rest. Uh, as far as query is concerned, we uh, try to, uh, so we, we ran into this problem of having to intersect balls with uh, hyperplanes, 
And uh, our problem here is that balls have not have a non trivial geometry. So a nice way to do that is to uh, relax the ball hyperplane intersection procedure and, and allow it to uh, have, um, have false, false positive. Uh, so the two ideas, the Euclidean ball, one could just use you know, an outer, outer Euclidean ball, or um, the other alternative is uh, using the bounding box that we, that we just defined um, with, uh, with the ball box theorem. And it turns out that since the, okay, I'm just showing here in the picture that this is not so hard to do, it's just a matter of checking whether all the eight vertices for this specific case are on the same side of the, of the hyperplane. Um, so here we, we basically, this is what, um, this is uh, the deep result from the ball box theorem tells us that the ratio between the two uh, is actually going to infinite. So if we are using the Euclidean distance, we are basically wasting uh, infinite computation uh, asymptotically. Um, and also, since the outer bounding box is tied to the reachable set, we also know that any other choice would at most lead us to a constant factor improvement. Um, these are some results. Um, we uh, actually compared um, a lot of variations of our algorithm with uh, popular libraries, uh, FLAN, uh, using hierarchy hierarchical clustering, and OMPL which implements uh, geometric near axis trees. And we see that on the build time, we are, we are much faster than uh, all of them uh, by an order of magnitude or two, uh, depending on the, on the method we're using. And on the, uh, in the inquiry time, um, we are actually, so our least splitting strategy, which is the, leak, the, the green curve, is actually outperforming uh, all the other methods. And uh, always consider that you always need to build before querying. So actually, what matters is mostly the, the, the first graph. Um, so, Dirty laundry slides, uh, basically, um, we, we still require explicit distance computations because we're doing exact nearest neighbors. So at some point, we have to compare distances. Uh, so we were in luck with ReachChef, but uh, we want to relax that and look into approximate nearest neighbors, maybe only based on the um, ball box theorem. Um, there is no general procedure to compute the size of the outer box, so I showed you those maneuvers. That was also kind of lucky. Uh, so we have to come up with a more general procedure for that. And um, also we had troubles uh, coming up with a least splitting for batch algorithms because the batch algorithm use uh, global statistics of the data, uh, whereas the uh, least splitting strategy is profoundly local to, the, to every single sample. So I guess my talk finishes here and I'm taking questions. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you for the speaker. <laughs> so any question? Joel, perhaps, I don't see. Yeah. Really Mm -hmm. In particular, uh, have you made any progress and do you have any thoughts about how you would progress um, for an approximate nearest neighbor version? So basically, um, the volume of the actual ball, uh, the, the sub remaining ball, I mean, is uh, always like a constant, like they're, they're, with respect to the box, it's kind of bounded. Um, so maybe using the box uh, would lead us to an error that we can bound by a factor, I don't know, some, some epsilon factor. And uh, that would, you know, instead of like computing explicit, like explicitly computed distances, we could just compare the outer box estimate of the distance. So in a sense, every time you compute an outer box, you're doing a lower bound to the cost itself. So we might want to compare lower bounds, you know, <laughs> and see if that helps. Uh, and we can actually prove uh, some some hard bounds on the on the on the quality of our results. That's just a preliminary thought. I haven't I haven't thought much more than that. Okay. Another question. Okay, uh, I actually thought about it, uh, but asymptotically, I think the the fact that you have leaves that have parents in common doesn't really quite matter. I, we're talking about order of a, a, a asymptotic order, so I believe uh, you consider what I did is just considering all the paths from the root to each leaf. And uh, uh, by the way, this is the approach that you would find in Bentley uh, in this 1975. So I just followed that. He uses exactly that idea. Yeah. De definitely, definitely, yeah. Okay. Uh, last uh, short question before yeah. we bef go into the thing. Yeah. Computer gra Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah? Uh, yeah, so along the lines of George, um, don't you want to get a lot of statistics developed? Yeah. Statistics with this, you would be able to. 
Yeah, so uh, that's was probably something to add to the dirty laundry. Uh, so far, the the Lee bracket uh, operation that at least my experience with it. So I don't know if there's more, but my experience with it is that it works very well with driftless systems. Uh, whenever, whenever you have a drift, uh, you you cannot just apply it right right away. Um, and uh, I'd be interested to actually look into that because, uh, yeah, driftless system is kind of a, a big restriction. Yeah. So I have a quick question. O okay, I, I did tend to, to move. So on. Thierry, in yes. computer graphics community, yes. header right here. Yes, a short one, yes. So oh, graphics yeah. community, KDT has been very well studied for the last 20 years. There were 100 papers. And every GPU supports a user for ray tracing. And they have found, after a lot of work, that surface area heuristic gives the best result. There are a lot of theoretical and practical results. Have mm -hmm. you compared your approach with that? Because they are used by millions of people. Surface uh, area heuristic. Those splittings are very simple and they give very good results in practice. So to be honest, 100%, I am not aware uh, too much of the graphics, you know, uh, but I I'd be glad to take it offline and talk about it. Okay. So I, I didn't give too much thought on that, yeah. Okay, thank you for the question. We can thank you, thank you.